I'm going to give you a breakdown on exactly how I created this animation. This project was based off of Clint Jones' latest contest, Endless Engines. The first thing that I needed to understand were the rules and requirements of the contest, because, quoting Clint, I didn't want to end up in the pit of despair. There's always a handful of artists that end up in the pit of despair. So here are the ground rules. It has to be 120 frames, 1 through 120, at 24 FPS, so 5 seconds total, and a fixed aspect ratio. Clint provides the template scenes so you can replace the demo scene with your own creation. The other requirements were to keep your vehicle center framed, keep a sense of speed and direction, and make sure not to touch the camera angle. Now this contest was announced on February 4th, 2023, and was due the evening of March 12th. That gave me five weeks to work on this. With my full-time job and knowing my availability, that gave me about two to three nights per week to work on this, with a few hours each night. I did, however, need to make sure that I finished the project the weekend of March 4th, because I had to edit this video to be released along with my submission for this challenge. This was just a personal goal of mine and not a requirement of the contest. To start things off, I had to come up with a schedule and timeline to make sure that I stayed on track and didn't fall behind. I roughed out a simple timeline that I made sure to stick with throughout the duration of the project. I gave myself one night to gather reference and concepting, two nights for rigging, three nights for animation, three nights for set building and lighting, and three nights for polish. I also gave myself a little bit of breathing room for when anything would go wrong, and trust me, things went wrong. Now that I knew the rules, I can start with the fun part, which was concepting the idea for this animation. I knew that I was going to use my Datsun 240Z based on Sun Kang's mod kit. This is a model that I created from scratch that includes a full exterior and interior. You can watch the entire modeling process on my YouTube channel completely for free. The timing couldn't have been more perfect with this challenge, because I was so excited to finally bring my model to life with this challenge. Regarding the overall concept, I had the Datsun drifting out of a turn, regaining control, and hitting a straight line picking up speed where it would exit the shop. For the environment, I had a little flexibility, so I was deciding between a city, a tunnel, or a desert environment. Early on in the challenge, Clint posted an update on some fantastic work in progress, and I saw a similar setup with the BMW on a desert. So, for the sake of redundancy, I ruled out the desert environment. I was also limited to whatever environment assets I could find because I couldn't spend a lot of time modeling the environment. I wanted to keep this grounded in reality, so I wanted the vehicle to travel at real world speeds. So between 20 miles coming out of the turn and hitting a top speed of about 70 to 80 miles per hour. Given that, I decided to go with the city environment. I also needed to decide on my overall workflow. I was deciding between Maya with Arnold de Vire, or was I going to use Blender with Cycles or Eevee? Or was I going to use just Unreal Engine? I opted to go with Maya and Unreal Engine. I would use Maya for the animation and rigging, and Unreal Engine for the environment and rendering. I would use Lumen for rendering, which would give me very quick render times, which also meant no path tracing. This was the most ideal workflow since I had to be very efficient with my time, and I didn't have a lot of time to waste exploring new workflows. Right at the beginning, I did a rough animation in Maya, exported it out as an FBX, and brought it into the Unreal Engine using the template scenes from Clint. This made sure that I had the entire workflow working right out the gate, so there were no surprises. With the confidence in my workflow nailed down, I can now find the specific reference that I needed to create this animation. This portion cannot be understated, and I say this in every single one of my videos. Reference is key when creating believable 3D art in CG. Whether it exists in real life or fantasy, it needs some basis off of the real world. I watched a lot of YouTube videos on racing, drifting, car dynamics, both from professionals and amateurs. While I was scouring the web for reference, I found the perfect shot. It was a shot of the vehicle coming out of a turn, correcting itself with the drift, and hitting a straight line, and that was exactly what I needed. I grabbed screenshots and studied it frame by frame using a free tool called DJV, link below in the description. This helped me nail down the overall timing for my animation, which was a huge help. With my confidence building on reference and workflow, I moved on to the rigging part of the pipeline. I knew I had to spend some time finding a good rig that I could use in Maya. So I went to the web and found a fantastic rig by Simon Mills called the Ultimate Adjustable Car Rig or UAC Rig for Maya. This is hands down one of the best rigs I have ever used in Maya. It is incredibly lightweight, stable, and modular. It is also very well documented by Simon, and he has a YouTube channel where he shows everything that you need to know to get up and running with the rig. If you're looking to do vehicle animation in Maya, then I couldn't recommend this rig more, so I'll drop a link in the description below. 
With the rigging out of the way, I could now focus on what I needed to spend the most amount of time on, which was animation. I know animation pretty well, and I can get by for nice simple animations, but I would not call myself a pro. Like every part of the CG pipeline, animation is its own art form. Since I had five seconds worth of animation, I had to make sure to give myself enough time to create a realistic and convincing animation. This is also why I heavily leveraged the reference that I found. I made sure that I studied what happens at key moments during the drift sequence to create a compelling animation. In a nutshell, I used a tried and true animation workflow of blocking out, detail blocking, splining, and polishing. This is where the rig also continued to shine as it gave me every possible control that I needed to be able to create a convincing vehicle animation. Now, I wish I could say everything went perfect during the animation process, but it didn't. I just couldn't quite get the animation where I wanted it, and I felt like I was looking at it too closely. I also had to use some of the pad timing to get this right. I also found out that since I only had five seconds, I couldn't include the whole drift sequence. Instead, I focused on the animation right at the end of the drift, where the dat sun would correct itself and hit the straight line. This allowed me to keep my original concept of the vehicle drifting and taking off. Otherwise, I just felt like I was trying to do too much with too little time. Remember, this animation had to be five seconds. If this was my own project, I could have easily edited in a few more seconds, but I couldn't. To give me some flexibility on timing for this sequence, I animated the full drift sequence, which gave me the control on where the endless engine animation can take place. This is also where I always recommend getting another pair of eyes to look at your project. I leaned on my good friend Sergey, whom I've worked with in the past and is an incredibly talented technical artist. He also knows how to drift a vehicle. So to emphasize, I created the full animation on my own, but Sergey was able to provide valuable critiques on the drifting sequence. I was outputting multiple play blasts during this process and on the last night, we jumped on a Discord call and worked through the final detailing of the animation. And this is where I ended up with. I was really happy where things were looking, and this was exactly where I wanted to be by the end of the animation timeline. Since I was using both Maya and Unreal Engine, I had to make sure to export everything correctly from Maya. When bringing animations into Unreal Engine, you want to make sure to export out your mesh and the skeleton rig as one import and your animation as a separate import. This will allow you to apply any animation through the single skeletal mesh. The process went like this. In Maya, we export just a skeletal mesh, removing any connections to the control rig and everything that we don't need. Then, in the final animated Maya file, I select the skeleton and delete the mesh this time and everything that we don't need, exporting out only the animation. Now, we head over to Unreal Engine to import the skeletal mesh FBX, bring the import into the level and then separately import the other FBX animation file. Finally, apply the animation to the skeletal mesh in the level. For the camera, I just animated it inside of Unreal Engine since it was only composed of a few frames to keep up with the vehicle. This made sure that I followed the requirements of the challenge by not accidentally moving the camera. With the modeling, rigging, animation all good to go, I can now work on set building the environment. As you can see from my play blast, I had very simple proxy objects to give me the good sense of speed with foreground and background elements. I now needed to go into Unreal Engine and start building the environment. I was of course limited to whatever assets I could find. As I was doing some research, I found that Unreal Engine gave their city pack out as a sample completely for free. So I downloaded the massive 100 gig sample into a separate project and began the process of pulling assets into my Endless Engines project. And then I started set building. Even though this animation was only five seconds long, I still needed to make sure that I was telling some sort of story. I wanted to give the animation a sense of purpose. I decided to lean more towards a construction set environment so the driver would hit the corner and drive around the construction. I focused on primary, secondary, and tertiary building. The road, overpass, and immediate buildings were the primary assets. The shipping containers, construction cones, street lights, lampposts, those are the secondary assets. And the smaller assets like trash cans, construction props, and the further out skyline, those were the tertiary assets. Each one of these environments played a crucial role in setting up this environment building. For example, I especially liked the overpass since it added nice contrast with the lighting. I was really aiming for having the dat sun start with that dusk lighting hitting the body, then go into darkness when going in the overpass shadow. 
Then as we hit the straight line and accelerate out of the shot, it would be illuminating with the God lighting and drive right out of the shot. The contrast added so much visual interest than an evenly lit, boring shot. Adding in all of these different elements of environment props really helps sell the believability of the world and the animation. During this process, I would create repeated play blasts and test the animation using the movie render cube. This would help me make final adjustments and tweaks. This is also the part in the process where I started to dial in the lighting. I used Lumen for the lighting, which leverages real-time global illumination and ray trace reflections. I used all the native Unreal Engine 5.1 lighting tools, like the directional light for the sun, skylight, sky atmosphere, volumetric clouds, and exponential height fog. I focused on more of a late afternoon dust style lighting, and this kept the environment darker and kept the vehicle as the main focal point of the animation. Finally, to make the dot sun pop, I added in some rec lights that followed the vehicle, which behaved as fill lights. Once I got to this point in the final polishing phase, I was just starting to make the last bit of tweaks, like adding in volumetric lighting, more fog, and particle effects. At this point in time, I made the creative decision to turn on the headlights to add more visual interest to the animation. For the final output, I exported an image sequence using the movie render queue. So that nice motion blur that you see is coming from the movie render queue export process. Here's a quick snapshot of what I used in the movie render queue giving me really nice motion blur, really nice lighting, and overall cinematic quality. I then took the sequence out of Unreal Engine, brought it into Adobe Premiere, and did some quick color grading and exported the sequence following Clint's specifications. This is the final animation. All in all, I'm really happy with how this turned out, especially since I had a very limited amount of time to work on this. My goal was to show that even with a limited amount of time, you can create very compelling works of art. I just wanted to say thank you for watching. This is a new format that I'm giving a try, so let me know if you've enjoyed this. I'm also happy to announce that I now have a Patreon and YouTube membership community. If you've benefited from my channel and content in any way, then please consider supporting by joining. You'll have access to 3D models, project files, Discord, and much more. It would also mean a lot, and it would help me continue to create future videos for everyone to learn 3D art. So with that, let me know if you have any questions on anything in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.